Being a college student can be stressful. Late nights, early mornings, tests, and project deadlines. Now combine that with a few ghosts. The Savannah College of Art and Design owns many buildings around Savannah, and most of them are haunted. But none are quite as active or as infamous as one particular dormitory. Let's talk about the ghosts of Oglethorpe House. Before this building was converted into a dorm and renamed Oglethorpe House, it was a hotel called the Downtowner Motor Inn. If the construction looks familiar, it's because there was a chain of these motels across the U.S., some of them still standing. All of them look similar with the same vibrant color scheme. One feature that separates the Savannah Hotel from the rest is the wrought iron railings that can still be seen today. Pay attention to that. Those railings will be important later. Savannah's Downtown or Motor Inn opened in 1964 and was owned by a man named J.C. Lewis Jr. He was a well-known businessman and developer in Savannah. During Lewis's time as mayor, he was also responsible for the development of the nearby Civic Center that I talked about in my last episode. Business at this hotel and others in the chain began to decline during the late 70s. There's a local legend that every SCAD student hears about how sex workers would bring their clients to the downtowner. The legend states that one such woman was doing business as her young son played with marbles on the walkway. One of his marbles rolled away. As he chased it, he fell through the railings of the sixth floor. Overcome with grief, she jumped off the same floor a few weeks later. Now I say all this is legend because I haven't been able to find any concrete evidence that this happened, but it wouldn't surprise me if it were true. The story mirrors what many American cities were seeing around the same time. It was the decline of the downtown and the rise of the suburban shopping mall. That trend started to reverse thanks to history and architecture buffs who didn't want to see historic buildings leveled. One of the preservationists in Savannah is the Savannah College of Art and Design, aka SCAD. The college has bought and fixed up buildings across Savannah's downtown and midtown areas. That includes the old downtown or motor inn. In 1990, this building became the first SCAD dorm and was named Oglethorpe House. A few years after students started moving in, fear hit the campus. Students were calling for more rights and the organization of a student government. Pipe bombs were detonated in front of the school's administrative building in April of 1992. This was followed by two more bombings in May, including one in front of the Civic Center near Oglethorpe House. Two students were arrested in the bombings. According to the Associated Press, they said they did it for entertainment and not as part of the protest for student rights. Still, that's a lot of strong energy happening in one place. Combine that with the legends that already existed about Oglethorpe House, and you have the perfect ingredients for a haunting. So what do people experience in O-House? Students have heard someone walking down the walkway in heels at all hours of the night. Other students have talked about a ghost who messes with you when you're in the shower, and another that likes to play with faucets. Probably the most unnerving specter I've been told about is a falling body. A former student who only wanted to be identified as Maggie said she and several others saw that one. One time we had our doors and windows open and we thought we saw a body drop from the floor above. Of course, we freak out and run outside onto the walkway to see if anyone fell. There was no one not even a shirt or something that could have been what we saw. It wasn't just my roommate and I. A couple people went outside to see if someone had fallen or jumped. One of my friends, Crystal Oblinger, also stayed in O House when she was a SCAD student. She told me the noises, both explained and unexplained, never really stopped. It's very hard to work sometimes because it, it is distracting in the middle of the night. And sometimes you can chalk it up to people just getting home late. Other times it's it, it was a little different. I remember one night in particular, it was around midterms. And um, I remember I had just finished, you know, studying. I felt good. I just need to get some sleep. And next thing I knew, I just kind of heard somebody walking back and forth on the walkway and it was kind of, it was annoying it was annoying and I was upset 
And so I got up to go see, like, is it somebody coming from downtown? Like, what's going on? And when I opened the door, there was nobody on the walkway. And it, I knew it was coming from my walkway because there's a certain reverb sound that you get when you are walking down the different ways. Another thing that they talk about with entities is that they feed off of energy, like your stress, high levels of stress, um, just high levels of emotions in general. So midterms and final week, yeah, it makes perfect sense that you'd start to get a lot of activity. And again, I heard footsteps on the rock on the on the walkway and I was like oh I'm not dealing with this today I'm not like I don't care I, I don't care if this thing eats me I don't care if this thing possesses me like I need to get some sleep because I'm super busy tomorrow and so again I walked outside I, I just opened the door instead of actually walking out on the walkway this time I just opened the door and I was like go to sleep this is the time to be haunting people. And then I slammed the door and went right back to bed. Normally when people yell at ghosts, it's because they're trying to get a reaction. You don't often see someone yell at a ghost to shut up so they can get sleep. Of course, that wasn't Crystal's only experience. You'd hear crying, you'd hear footsteps, you'd get that weird feeling. Sometimes even in your room, you'll get that weird feeling. When you're doing your laundry too, it, it always feels like somebody's watching you and uh, some people might say, oh, it's probably just a security cam, but it's, it's a different feeling. It's like you get this chill on the back of your neck. You have goosebumps on your arms. Like it, I just remember I used to hate, hate, hate doing my laundry there just because I would always end up having to do it at night and I just never felt comfortable because it always just felt like there was somebody following me around or watching me. Maggie also had a few other experiences herself. We heard screams all the time. And one night, we even heard what we thought was a child calling for his mom. Another time, I thought I saw a woman standing outside our window, looking in at my roommate as we were sleeping. Individual experiences vary a bit, but every person I've spoken with who stayed there said every student who has stayed there has had an experience. O House definitely kind of is like baby's first intro to ghosts in Savannah. Why is O House so active compared to other buildings and even other SCAD dorms? My personal opinion is that it's a combination of things. You have a bunch of 20-somethings coming into a new city and a new school. They're already in a heightened state of emotion. Spirits are drawn to all that energy and seem to have an easier time manifesting to people in that state. With so many new students coming and going from the building, they could also bring along their own spirits. Some of it could also be chalked up to irregular sleep and poor food choices. Speaking from personal experience as a morning news producer, that can definitely make you see things. The wrought iron railings could also play a part in the hauntings. Iron can ward off spirits, but it can also trap them. If I ever get an opportunity to check out Oglethorpe House for myself, you better believe I'll be there in a heartbeat. I would love a chance at a closer look. The next time you walk by the old downtown or motor inn, take a moment to look up. Maybe you'll see what all those students have seen.